Hello, I'm going to talk about Remus Surprise Royal. This is not a particularly standard method, although I think it deserves to become one. It's been run and named relatively recently in this <clears throat> peel of splice that you see here from 2016. Uh, there hasn't been a peel of it since by itself, as far as I can see. Interestingly, the seconds place lead end variation was named first way back in 1997. And if you look at the footnote down here from the, <clears throat> the first peel uh, containing Remus, giving the place notation as a new method, it says Remus, a bit like Phobos. And I think that's one of the reasons why it looks so attractive uh, as a surprise royal method. Phobos, surprise Maximus, is one of the modern standard Threlfell methods. And Remus has the, the same back work as Phobos, but an easier front work, which is all right place. And so it's an excellent stepping stone towards Phobos, as well as being a very nice method in its own right. It's the kind of method which has a clear back work and front work, which are separate and have different patterns uh, and can be learned differently. So here's the back work. We've got some fishtails near the beginning of the lead and then some more fishtails and then the rest of the back work is treble while punting until you get fishtails again uh, towards the end of the lead. And these pairs of fishtails give you a characteristic pattern in the blue line, which is that you, you start the lead by hunting for a fishtail, then you reverse hunt back to a fishtail in the position you started in, and then you start forward treble while punting. And a very good useful feature is that the fishtails towards the end of the lead are in the same positions that they were in at the beginning of the lead. And that's true for every place bell which has got fishtails both at the beginning and ends of the lead. Uh, they're in the same position. So you always know when you have to stop for trouble while hunting and do a fishtail. The front work is mainly based on forward hunting on the front six. And then there's a dodge at the half lead which is quite a nice stabilizing feature <clears throat> and we're going to look at ways of remembering when the half feet dodge uh, pops up and then you have the interface between the front work and the back work what i sometimes call the, the twiddly bits and in this kind of method these are the parts that just have to be learned separately and then usually you can develop some useful mnemonics for them um, the twiddly bits in remus are, are actually not too difficult, helped by the fact that the entire front work is, is all right place. It's very important to look at the place bell order when learning a new method. Here is the place bell order of Remus, 10, 6, 2, 5, 9, and so on. If you are familiar with the place bell order of Little Bob, you will recognize that Remus has the same order, so that's useful. Or it's the reverse of Cambridge place bell order. Um, and Cambridge place bell order is quite well known, so that can be helpful. You can think of it as taking alternate positions in London place bell order or alternate positions in reverse plain bob place bell order. Or if you like the numerical system where plain bob place bell order is denoted plus one, then Remus is minus two, which is the same thing as saying that it's reverse alternate plain bob. Let's have a look at some place bells. <clears throat> These three are place bells that are entirely winging the back work pattern, uh, seventh, ninth, and, and tenth place bell. You can see that in each case, there's a pair of fishtails near the beginning of the lead, fishtails in the same positions near the end of the lead. And note that in ninth place bell, this sort of double fishtaily structure with line behind in between, this is also part of the, the back work pattern. Um, so these, these first fishtails here, these would really like to be up in 11, 12, uh, if we had enough bells to, to do that. And similarly, the fishtails here would really like to be up in 11, 12. So it's all part of the same pattern. Let's look at the other place bells. Uh, here's seconds place bell. Uh, it starts with a longish piece of work in one, two, which um, looks fairly easy to remember. A useful mnemonic is that when second space bell gets onto the front again, it does lead and double dodge 
which is how it finished the, the first piece. So you've got a, a little section of work which is coming up twice. And in between, it hunts up to fix place, um, does a dodge at the half lead um, and hunts back down to the front. And we're going to have a look in a moment at how to remember exactly where these half lead dodges appear, apart from knowing that they're at the half lead and therefore maybe you can identify them by uh, listening to the position of the treble. Third place bell uh, starts off with a little bit of a backwork pattern. It does the first fishtail in 5-6, um, but it can't come down and do a fishtail in 3-4 because it would crash into the treble. So instead it makes a place um, before passing the treble and then does this, uh, this third 3-4, which is repeated in reverse in the other half of the lead. And you can remember that the 3-4 dodges are towards the central part of the lead. Uh, you can also note that the, um, the thirds and fourths places there are when the treble is dodging in, in five, six. And in between those two pieces of work, there's hunting on the front six with the half lead dodge, which in this place bell is in three, four. And it's also nice to notice that uh, the overall pattern in the central part of thirds place bell has a very nice rotational symmetry around that three, four dodge. Fifth place bell also starts off in the backward pattern. It goes to the fishtail in <clears throat> seven, eight. Um, if it did a fishtail in five, six, it would be crashing into the treble. So instead uh, it, it makes a place to switch to forward hunting, <clears throat> dodges with the treble. Fifth, six, this is an example of the kind of twiddly bit that you just have to learn. And then it's into the, the clay hunting block on the front six uh, with a half lead dodge. And it leaves the front work by going all the way up to the fishtail in, in seven, eight. And if you remember that fifth place bell is going to uh, re-enter the back work pattern, it must do it by having a fishtail in the same position that it did its first fishtail in. And then it's up to become ninth place bell. Oh yes, there is the little piece of work that you just have to remember. Let's have a look at how you can tell when to do the half lead dodge besides just <clears throat> listening to know when the half lead is, is coming. Uh, so let's look at seconds, thirds and fifths place bells um, and see where they do the half lead dodge and which place they go into at the half lead. So second place bell, half lead dodge five, six down. So it's in sixth place at the half lead. Thirds place bell, three, four down at the half lead in fourth place. Fifth place bell, one, two down at the half lead into second place. And this pattern of, of two going to sixth place, three going to fourth place, five going to second place. Maybe this looks a little bit familiar. It's the place bell order of Cambridge Minor. Wow, what is the place bell order of Cambridge Minor doing embedded in the front work of Remus Surprise Royal? This could be useful. Let's just check to see whether that works for the remaining place bells in the front work. Uh, fourth place bell, five, six up at the half lead, becoming fifth place, and sixth place bell, three, four up at the half lead becoming third place. And yes, indeed, that is still part of the place bell order of Cambridge Minor. Actually, that's not quite so amazing. Um, if you think about it, a second place bell, given that it's in the front work, it has to do the half lead dodge somewhere. As it happens, it's five, six down. And then all the other bells in the front work just fit around it because they're all working in their natural forcing order around half lead. So it's really just the fact that the second place bell um, gets to the half lead in position to be five, six down, that means we've got the, the Cambridge place bell order going on there. If it had turned out that second place bell did three, four down at the half lead, I would be saying exactly the same thing, but based on plain bob place bell order. But still, that's a useful tip for remembering where to do the, the half lead dodge. So you don't have to rely on, on listening for it. There's one other place bell which is in the front work and that is eighth place bell and it dodges in one two up at the half lead going into first place. Now of course this is not part of the pattern of the Cambridge Minor place bell order. Um, firstly because uh, Cambridge Minor doesn't have eighth place bell and secondly because it also doesn't have first place bell either. Um, so this is one thing that you'll just have to remember. So key points uh, that I've mentioned, first of all, identify the patterns in the grid of the method. Secondly, use the place bell order to link them up uh, into the overall trajectory of the blue line. 
and thirdly, develop extra mnemonics where necessary to help tie everything together and to remember the twiddly bits of work that don't fit into the front work pattern or the back work pattern. And that's all.